Okay, so I'll go ahead and I think we have a session of one hour where uh, I will be speaking for half an hour. I'll be talking about um, uh, emerging technologies in high speed underwater communication. And then I will give the hand to uh, uh, engineer uh, Rania Tukebri, who will talk about uh, some uh, issues related to space technologies. So let me start with my presentation. So uh, the talk is about uh, essentially optical wireless communication underwater, and that's essentially the next frontier in underwater wireless communication. So let me start with an outline of uh, my talk. So basically, uh, you know, I would like to motivate why there is uh, this kind of uh, strong interest these days in underwater technologies, and as part of that, underwater wireless communication, and how uh, actually optical uh, uh, technologies are the technology to go to if you want to go for high-speed underwater communication. Then I will kind of talk about the various uh, research direction that are being investigated uh, within this topic. Uh, I will show you also some uh, kind of uh, setup that we have built here at KAUST uh, on, on, on this uh, topic. So let's start with some uh, background. So the background that is important to realize is that essentially 71% of Earth is covered with water, uh, which means that there is a great potential to explore things and uh, underwater. Uh, most of this underwater world is still undiscovered, and uh, there is a need uh, to kind of uh, evolve uh, in, you know, and discover this underwater world for uh, for underwater monitoring, uh, for uh, basically oil, gas, and other kind of resource exploration. Uh, it is also good for environmental monitoring. It's also good for scientific data collection. So there is a need to kind of uh, develop underwater engineering technologies. And uh, as part of that, one of the key aspects is essentially to develop high data rate and real-time transmission from the underwater world. So if you look at uh, what is available now, uh, typically what's being used is uh, acoustical communication. This is kind of the mode of uh, transmission that has been used uh, over the years. It tends to be, uh, let's say, low speed, but it has a good range. When we, when we talk about low speed, we are talking about uh, uh, in the order of, uh, let's say, uh, uh, kilobit per second. So really this is not the way to go if you want to do real time video streaming. Now, uh, for this reason, uh, there is actually quite a bit of interest in looking at uh, laser transmission underwater, uh, because we know that if you use a green or blue laser, depending on the nature of the water, you can reach, you know, super high speeds, megabits, even gigabit per second, but of course, over shorter distances. So this motivated people over the last decade to start looking very carefully at uh, optical wireless uh, communication for high-speed underwater transmission. So one of the first things we need to do as uh, telecom engineers is to understand, characterize, and model the underwater channel. And to do so, one has to understand what is the uh, underwater medium. So here uh, we are looking at a, a water or a seawater drop, and if you magnify it uh, 25 times, you can see all kind of, uh, uh, you know, dissolved salts, mineral components, uh, you know, uh, all kind of uh, uh, maybe bacteria that are actually uh, living in this environment. Now, uh, obviously, uh, these are kind of creating an environment that is uh, leading to some uh, interesting effects that need to be characterized. And the three main effects that uh, we look at uh, from a modeling perspective there is, first of all, of course, basic attenuation. Uh, this is due to the fact that, uh, you know, as you move away, uh, any wave, optical or electromagnetic wave, is going to lose uh, uh, in power. Uh, there is also some kind of, uh, uh, a kind of some randomness due to the fact that there are some turbulence within this water uh, that needs to be kind of characterized statistically. And there are also uh, another important aspect that needs to be characterized, which is the, uh, let's say, the pointing error. When you talk about laser link, 
uh, obviously you are able to get uh, very high efficiency you are able to get a super high speed because uh, you are able to focus light uh, uh, in a narrow pencil beam this assumes obviously perfect alignment so as soon as uh, you lose alignment with transmitter and uh, receiver you start essentially uh, getting a degradation of signal to noise ratio and as a result you start losing in um, the, let's say in quality of transmission so these are the three effects that we have been studying over the last few years so if you want to look at attenuation uh, and scattering uh, these two effects that uh, are uh, uh, you know kind of uh, uh, modeled by this uh, so-called uh, radiative transfer equations so it's, it's a quite complex mathematical equation uh, the way you can solve it you can solve it numerically and that's one approach that we adopted but you can also try uh, to to solve this equation uh, by kind of by simulation method by monte carlo simulation methods uh, it is uh, the monte carlo simulation are widely used but that tend to be uh, quite slow so basically you need a lot of computer resources to be able to to kind of uh, get your results so on the other hand uh, it can give you some interesting way to mimic the behavior of photons and the water so actually we, we we developed quite a bit of monte carlo simulation we have few papers on that it kind of mimic exactly the behavior of how a photon will propagate underwater uh, uh, including the attenuation effect and the scattering effect so i'm showing here uh, like basically uh, some illustration on how uh, sorry uh, how this uh, photon propagates and uh, you, you can see here for example you you, you see this photon and it propagates uh, and sometimes it gets captured by the receiver. Sometimes, because of scattering effect, uh, it gets uh, deviates and it doesn't. It's not captured by the receiver end. So here, uh, in this particular case, it is actually captured, and so on and so forth. So bottom line, you can keep doing that over 100 iterations, and you can basically count the number of photons that you can uh, obtain at the receiver. If receiver and transmitter are perfectly aligned, you can basically kind of capture most of your photons. If uh, there is misalignment, you may lose some photon on the way, and uh, you, we were able actually to kind of simulate all of these uh, kind of phenomena and compute, uh, like uh, by uh, essentially counting the number of photons that we are able to capture, what is the total uh, uh, basically received power at the receiver given a certain transmitted power. Now, uh, another approach, as I mentioned, is to use uh, numerical techniques or numerical solving techniques. Uh, and uh, in this case, essentially, you just need to discretize the RTE equation, and then you end up having this kind of uh, uh, kind of uh, coupled, uh, 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 you know, uh, system of linear equation that have to be solved uh, uh, numerically. And uh, we developed an approach uh, that is quite fast to, to do that. And uh, uh, bottom line, we were able to obtain some results. So here I'm showing in my uh, in my slide here some of the results that we were able to obtain via different approach. So we, we picked a certain type of water with a certain kind of, uh, kind of uh, uh, we call that the albedo scattering characteristics. This kind of uh, characterize a kind of type of water. Is it limpid water? Is it like more kind of a, a turbid water? Uh, so uh, the, 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 the albedo can, can characterize that. So for a given uh, water, we're able to do some uh, 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 analysis and simulation. So here we are trying to look at the amount of received power on the y-axis as function of the distance. So obviously you have a benchmark. This is called the beer law. This is just a very simple attenuation model if we ignore scattering effect. And that gives you basically kind of a pessimistic, assuming that the scattering effect is all negative and you are not able to capture any photons. Uh, you assume that any photon gets scattered is lost. That gives you uh, like a lower bound on your power. In general, you get a little bit more because some of the photons that are scattered are, uh, are captured at the receiver end. And uh, we are using here different approach. We have in red the Monte Carlo approach. And we have basically uh, in blue uh, the Monte Carlo approach. And as you see, they give very close results, our analytical approach and our simulation approach. Actually, we went all the way and uh, built an experiment in one of our labs in collaboration with Professor Boon Oi here at KAUST, the professor in photonics. So we had a water tank. Uh, it's just one meter, but basically by round trip using mirrors, we we're able to mimic a channel of multiple meters up to seven meters, and we will be able to do some measurements. And in green, we see the result of the measurements. And as you see, there is a good match between measurements and uh, between uh, simulation in blue 
and between and analytic result in red. So we have a good way now to characterize attenuation and scattering phenomena underwater using multiple approach, experimental approach, theoretical approach, and simulation approach. Now, uh, because of that, we can now look at the uh, effect of attenuation in different kind of wa water environment. So obviously, if you are in, uh, this is again, the let's say the receive power as function of distance. If you are deep inside the water, like a coastal environment, you receive the highest amount of power. Uh, if you are close to harbor, or the closer you are to harbor, the more, let's say, uh, kind of um, uh, turbid is the water, the less limpid is the water, the less power you get because the stronger is the scattering effect. And as you notice, uh, there is kind of a kind of a, a relative match between, let's say, uh, like the, the the beer low and the exact result. But uh, but uh, obviously, the exact uh, result obtained by the red curves are more accurate. Uh, you have to notice that our uh, analytical approach, which is like this numerical approach, is much faster than the Monte Carlo approach. So here what we are showing, we are showing the amount of gain in terms of processing gain time in, in computer simulation uh, or computer computation when you go by numerical approach versus a simulation approach. You can have a gain of the order of 10 or all the way to 100 factor uh, as the distance increase by using a numerical approach. Now, uh, another uh, uh, kind of effect we looked at, so after attenuation scattering, is to look at the random effect due to turbulence. So turbulence are due usually to a, a gradient of temperature or a gradient in salinity. So for, in for instance, let's assume you have, uh, you have kind of uh, underwater robots trying to vid video stream in real time, a kind of a pipeline that is kind of 20 meters deep inside the water. Obviously, as the optical wave propagates from 20 meters down all the way to the surface of water, there is a gradient of temperature. The temperature 20 meters down is different than the temperature at the surface of water. So this gradient of temperature, we try to model it in the lab by building a water tank where we put two plates at the two ends with different temperature and we create a temperature gradient. So for example, we can put, uh, uh, like if we assume that the two plates are at the same temperature, the the, the grade is zero, but then if you start kind of keep picking this, uh, stay, like you, if you kind of keep the same level uh, of temperature at the two ends, then the temperature grade is zero. But if you start like basically lowering the temperature at this plate and, and making it higher in this other end, you create a, a, a grade of temperature. And what we notice is the kind of greater the grade of temperature, the more turbulence you see. So here. Uh, for example, is essentially the laser beam at the receiver end. That's a picture of the laser beam at the receiver end. If you have a uniform temperature water, there is no variation in temperature uh, uh, along the path of propagation. And here is the same laser beam after going through a channel that is subject to a strong temperature gradient. And obviously, when you compare two kind of laser kind of signature, here it's a kind of very clear, kind of very focused a pencil beam, whereas here you still uh, see this kind of uh, uh, scintillation and this kind of variation in the intensity of the laser link. So if you are looking at the statistics of the distribution of intensity of the receiver end, what you notice, the stronger is this temperature gradient. Here we move from 0 0.05 degrees per centimeter all the way to 0.2 degrees per centimeter. The wider are the fluctuation signal and uh, the broader is the distribution. And actually we realize that the best fit is a generalized gamma distribution in red. That is a good model for the fluctuation of signal and the uh, gradient of temperature. We looked also at the effect of air bubbles. Uh, this also affect uh, a laser light propagation underwater. And we realized without getting into too much mathematical details that a good model for this kind of uh, uh, distribution is a bimodal distribution where we have on the left an exponential that is controlled by the amount of or the intensity of the bubbles and on the right the amount of turbulence uh, due to for example grade of temperature of grade of salinity so here we we, we kind of uh, uh, looked at the effect of uh, uh, the, the 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 variation of the intensity of bubbles and the stronger are the bubble intensity, the basically the more the bimodal distribution is 
is kind of, uh, 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 let's say, uh, visible. Now, uh, in terms of, remember what I was talking about when you look at characterization of the optical channel, there are three effects, attenuation and scattering. This was done through, uh, let's say, uh, this kind of uh, either simulation approach or a numerical approach. Then there was this randomness due to turbulence uh, inside the environment, uh, uh, inside of the uh, water environment due to, let's say, grade of temperature or grade of salinity. And this was modeled by this kind of uh, generalized gamma distribution. The last effect we looked at is the impact of pointing error. So obviously, at the receiver end, you have a detector and you have a, a beam footprint. Ideally, the beam footprint is completely centered around the detector, but because of vibration, because of floating devices, you start having some vibration and you have a mismatch between the center of the beam footprint and the center of the detector, which means the detector will capture only a fraction of the power. And this is something we could characterize and we could model and we're able to analyze the effect of pointing error. So here we show, for example, the data rate that one can get uh, as function of the uh, pointing error. So uh, uh, scenario A is a scenario where we have minimal kind of uh, misalignment and scenario C is a scenario where we have very strong kind of misalignment. And obviously, as you see, the data rate in bit per second per hertz uh, decreases as uh, the misalignment uh, increases. And uh, we here we characterize also the arch probability, which is like the percentage of time you are in failing kind of state because of misalignment. And we notice that uh, essentially uh, the stronger is this kind of uh, misalignment in terms of the strength of the variance of the jitter or of the, of the vibration between receiver and transmitter alignment, uh, the, uh, the higher is the arch probability, which is in green here, uh, which is not good, of course. Let me conclude by uh, sharing with you some of the experiments we did here at KAUST. So we, we, we start this project like five years ago. There is a strong interest here to try to develop uh, underwater technology for Red Sea exploration. Our campus is on the Red Sea. So uh, we started, of course, uh, uh, five years ago, developing all kinds of experiments. Every experiment had one particular objective and they were all published over the last uh, few years. So the first experiment we did was to do an experiment uh, basically in a, in a water tank over seven meters. As I mentioned earlier, we were able to achieve a 2.3 gigabit per second over seven meters. At that time, it was like in 2016 or 17, a world record. Meanwhile, of course, people in China and Taiwan were able to do uh, uh, slightly better. We were able to push a couple of years after that using a blue laser. So green laser is used more for turbid water, blue laser for more limpid water. So we were able to use in a limpid water, uh, a blue laser, and we were able to achieve another record of 4.8 gigabit per second over 5.4 meter. So these are, of course, very short distances. The kind of application we are targeting is, a, for example, embedded camera underwater that are kind of uh, taking pictures or taking movies. And there is a, like underwater robots, we call them sometimes ROVs, they will come close to these cameras and they would like to download the information that was filmed or that was like captured over the last day or last week or whatever. And basically, instead of trying to kind of uh, connect to that camera through a cable, you just basically activate the camera and download with this very high speed, very short range uh, underwater optical link and download all the memory or all the buffer that is in the embedded camera underwater. So these are the kind of application you can use when you have this kind of a very short range communication, high speed capabilities. Now, the next paper we wrote was a paper wrote like after that, where we tried to go for a longer distance. So we were able to go all the way 20 meters. We could have gone even further. It was like a, one of our swimming pool on campus. And we were able to achieve 1.5 gigabit per second over 20 meter distance. Again, we could have done even further, like we can go all the way maybe to 100 meter and still achieve in the order of uh, multiple hundred megabit per second. And then the last experiment we did only very recently, where we use ultraviolet to basically look at non line of sight underwater communication. Obviously, the, the three first experiments were experiment where again we assume that there is a line of sight between or like direct connection between transmitter and receiver. In scenarios where you cannot achieve uh, or you cannot uh, find yourself in line of sight situation, then you have to rely on uh, essentially non-line of sight. And in, th in that case, it turns out that uh, UV or the ultraviolet range is the best. And we were able to kind of demonstrate that 
in one of our experiments. Now, one last thing we did very recently, this is a, a collaboration with, again, Professor Boon Oi and uh, Professor Basim Shahada, uh, who uh, leads uh, the system aspect of this work. We tried to develop uh, basically, uh, high-speed uh, video streaming underwater. So we did first uh, an experiment where we were able to kind of, uh, 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 and this was Professor Basim uh, Shahata work. He was able to do some real-time couple of years ago underwater video streaming over a reconfigurable wireless optical link. But then building on that, our objective was to basically kind of use a standard smartphone uh, to use it from underwater in order to basically communicate uh, using some standard app like a Skype or WhatsApp from underwater. So we wrote recently a paper that kind of uh, picked up quite well uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the news. Uh, uh, the paper title was Aquafy, Delivering Internet Underwater Using Wireless Optical Links. It appeared in the communication magazine issue of uh, uh, May 2020. And the very basic idea was to <coughs> take a standard phone, put it in a, in a kind of watertight enclosure, include in this watertight enclosure as a Raspberry Pi. Basically, the phone can be a, a kind of uh, running any kind of app like Skype or WhatsApp for video streaming kind of application and can activate the Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi is captured by a Raspberry Pi. It gets converted through a laser into an optical signal. The optical signal can go through the underwater channel at the other end let's say uh, like uh, above water uh, uh, there is like a, like a, like a, uh, like a boat or a ship that will have another raspberry pi that will convert the optical signal to uh, an ethernet kind of uh, kind of signal and it will go through the internet backbone so that was the idea the idea was how to go from a standard uh, application standard smartphone and basically uh, video stream from the underwater so we did a successful experiment in the lab uh, we have here uh, uh, like one of our uh, students at that time, he graduated, Saifal Najorda, who was able to kind of um, uh, essentially uh, do a very short experiment of Skype uh, over a, like a, a, a very kind of small water tank and uh, uh, showing essentially that we were able to go through, the, uh, through water and run a Skype applications. Uh, and uh, 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 this was like, we did like something much more complicated in a, in a much bigger water tank and even a swimming pool. And uh, the, uh, our next step, obviously, is to try to do like some of these big experiments, like the one here published a couple of years ago by MIT, where they are trying to kind of uh, uh, do experiment in the ocean. In our case, would be hopefully in the Red Sea, where we try to kind of move forward with all of these lab-based experiments in a much controlled environment into basically a, a more kind of a, a real world environment underwater. So with that, I would like to thank you. I would like to thank, of course, and acknowledge the contribution of all my collaborator in this project, Professor Boon Oi, who is a professor in photonics at CAUS, who has been in kind of, uh, uh, we, where we did all the experimental uh, aspect in his lab. Professor Basim Shahada, who is kind of charge of system application and this demo where we did, for example, Skyping and WhatsApp from underwater. And Professor Mariam Laleg, uh, who is actually Professor in Control, and where basically uh, her expertise is crucial for developing alignment schemes to make sure that transmitter and receiver are perfectly aligned. With that, I would like to thank you. I invite you to visit uh, our webpage if you want to see more details about all this publication.